Good morning, and thank you for joining me uh, in another product review. Don't do these too often. Um, it's not exactly a, a review of the product. Um, it's just another passion of mine that I'd like to share with you. Um, I know that, uh, well, I don't know, but I'm assuming that a lot of young people today um, are into gaming, a lot of them. And um, things were no different for me when uh, I was growing up. Um, and I've done some research into the history of gaming. Um, I have a lot more to learn. I don't know everything. Um, I know only a fraction of what there probably is to know. But um, I grew up during the second generation of gaming. Um, the first generation of gaming. Um, consisted of um, video game systems with maybe um, a few built-in games. I'm not sure. They were built-in. And they were black and white. And they probably didn't even have sound. I don't know. And that uh, went on probably since the beginning of the 70s or maybe the end of the 60s through the late 70s. And then started the second generation of video game systems and the most popular among them was the Atari uh, video computer system, the Atari VCS, which would later be named um, the 2600. And that was launched, I believe, in 1977 with about nine titles, uh, nine games that were removable. You can plug them into the computer system and remove them and put in other games. So um, it was then possible to continue making games for this video game system. And uh, around that time, um, I, I remember probably my first experience with a video game system was, I don't even know how I knew about it, but I saw it at somebody's house and, oh my God, I want to play that game so bad. I was just a little boy and I was trying to behave and I didn't know the people. I just knew that we were visiting. I just knew that they had a, a, a gaming system that I wanted to try. It was called the Odyssey and it was made by Magnavox. But then I ended up getting the Atari because I had neighbors upstairs who owned it uh, with a whole slew of games. I can't remember any of the titles. This is going back to over 30 years ago. And um, I used to go up there and play their games and I wanted my own video game system and I begged and I pleaded and I cried. I was an annoying child growing up. I used to uh, usually throw myself on the ground kicking and screaming until I had my way and my mother would usually not give in to me. And I remember her telling me, you want that video game system so bad? You, you, you say you're going to kill yourself if you don't get it, go ahead, jump out the window. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> you know, but I was exasperating, but eventually I got it and I was so excited and I called my friends upstairs in the building that we lived in and I said, guess what I got? An Atari. I was so excited and they actually hung the phone up on me. They were so mad. And it's because, you know, I didn't understand it at the time. I probably, I probably just thought it was jealousy. But, you know, looking back on some of the things that happened to me as a kid, I, I realize now it was not really just jealousy. It was a loss of control because my going up there and needing them to be able to play these games was a form of control because I'm, I, you know, I don't remember a lot of the things that went on when I was that young, but they probably said, okay, you want to play? All right, then this is what I want from you. And they probably were constantly, you know, dang, you know, dangling the carrot, so to speak. You give me, you, you'll get this if you do this. Um, but anyway, um, I got the Atari and I started buying games for it. And I can't even remember what titles I had how many games I eventually amassed, probably 40, 50 games. And, um, you know, at the time the Atari was out, they were, you know, video, video game systems out there, they're a little bit more sophisticated, like the Intellivision, but they had very few titles. Everybody was making titles. Everybody was making games for the Atari. 
Um, but Atari's graphics were awful uh, compared to the Intellivision and even ColecoVision, which I think was, was uh, competing with the Atari at the time. And, um, but anyway, I, I uh, eventually got, probably in the, the mid to late 80s, the Atari 7800 when that was released. Um, I think it was like released in 86. And before then, between the 2600 and the 7800, uh, there was a 5200 that I think might have been released around 83, uh, which is known as um, the video game crash. There was, you know, the, I guess the market was just oversaturated with so many games. Um, and I hear that they ended up throwing away a lot of games that went unsold. Um, but the gaming system, uh, the, the, the gaming market eventually made a comeback because games are still around, right? Um, but I never got the 5200 because they were making games for it, uh, but there weren't a lot of games for it, and then they would render the 2600 games useless. You couldn't, they, it wasn't backwards compatible. Entered the 7800, which was backwards compatible. So that's why I bought it, and the graphics were pretty good um, on the 7800 for its time. It wasn't, wasn't bad at all. Uh, wasn't fantastic, but I think for, for its time it was uh, probably about average. But looking back, maybe not so much. And um, I don't, you know, I don't know why one game that I remember, and I think was from the 7800, was called Phoenix. Really like that game. Um, so many games to talk about. I'm not going to be able to talk about them all today. Um, but I want to let you know why I'm bringing this up now. Because um, it's something from my past. But um, I don't play games anymore. It just doesn't doesn't interest me. Um, I never I never moved on to other games gaming systems after the Atari 2600 and 7800. I just my interest just kind of dropped out because um, around the time I got the 7800 and I didn't even play it that much. One thing I liked about the 7800 were the joysticks. They were very uncomfortable to use on the 7800. Um, so I didn't really get addicted to the 7800 as I did the 2600. And then right around that time, probably around 88, I got into um, computers, um, namely the Kami, as we called it. But it was a Commodore 64. And you could play games on the Commodore 64, but you could use it in so many other ways that I ended up not really even playing games on it or playing games anymore. Uh, what fascinated me about computers at that time and the Commodore was the ability to connect through the phone lines to other computers and talk to people. That was how I was exposed to the Commodore 6400 because I worked with somebody that would use um, the Commodore that way. And um, I remember connecting to his computer while he was at ha his house from my house and having little conversations um, over the keyboard, you know, just typing words. I was like, wow, this is mind blowing. Um, but, you know, over the years, as I've grown older, I think you probably know, I've become very nostalgic for things in the past. And um, also, um, I have a lot more time on my hands than I ever did. And um, over the last few years, um, probably since they started doing this, I think in 2005, I've seen these retro game systems for Atari with games built in. Um, I think beginning with like 20 to 40 games. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. I think I'm going to buy this someday. But I never did. But I was busier. And now not so much. So I finally got the Atari Flashback, it's called. And um, I have the model from 2017. Um, they just released a new model, the Flashback uh, 9, I believe, at the end of 2018 for the holiday shopping season. But what I have is the Atari Flashback 8 Gold. And um, I just mulled over the various um, releases and which one that I wanted. And I waited until the end of 2018 to see what the new release was going to be like. And the new release didn't have quite as many games. And I know quantity shouldn't always be chosen over um, quality. But um, it's not just that the Flashback 8 uh, Gold has 
has the most um, games. It's also called the Activision Edition. And I remember growing up, Activision made the best graphic games, and, and they were a lot of fun. And um, Activision got started because of um, several programmers who programmed games for Atari couldn't get credit for their work. You know, it is an art form. I mean, Atari would release these games and nobody knew who was responsible for the game. Um, it was just branded Atari, that's all we knew. Um, so these, um, you know, disgruntled employees uh, left and launched Activision, started making games for the 2600 under the Activision um, moniker, and um, the, the games were a lot of fun and better graphics. And there's a few here. Pitfall was incredible. And what I don't like about the Atari Flashback 8 Gold is they eventually released a sequel to Pitfall. Pitfall was so popular. So they released Pitfall 2 Lost Caverns. And I don't think I ever played it, but I've watched some YouTube videos on it. And, it, and, and you know, there's continuous music playing throughout. And it looks like a lot of fun. Now, some of the earlier editions of the Atari Flashback do have um, Pitfall 2. And, but not this one, and which is odd because this is the Activision edition. You would think it would have a more comprehensive list of Activision titles, and any Activision titles on the older flashbacks should certainly be included, but it's not. A couple of other really nice games that I liked that were not included were Frogger, um, uh, Pac-Man, Ms. Pac-Man, um, at least even Junior Pac-Man, not included. Now, what makes this the Atari Flashback 8 gold? I think what makes it gold is the wireless uh, joysticks, which is really nice uh, because um, I don't have to sit by the TV set. I can sit here on the other end of the room and play the game. And um, I'll do that in just a minute. I'm going to play some of the games so you can check it out uh, along with me. Um, let's just go ahead and do that now, okay? Uh, first game I'm going to play, um, as you can see, these are the recent games I played. There's a nice little menuing system here. Um, it shows you all the games that I've played recently. Um, I'm not really good at um, navigating through the various menus. There is these nifty little buttons on the joystick that wasn't originally included in the Atari 2600. Um, and they are useful, but you got to look at them under a magnifying glass to see what they say. And I don't like that about the buttons. you got to look at them before you press them. Or just play it so much that you always know what each button is going to do. Um, it says reset, uh, select, start, and replay. And I don't really see very good with these glasses on. Uh, they're not for reading. So... Um, let me go ahead and go to alpha, see if I can go to the alphabetical menu. Um, I can't get out of this menu. Oh, good grief.
honestly because they um, it'll take way too long to play at even a piece of all of the games. One of my favorites on this screen was Adventure. Love the game. Graphics are terrible. Um, let me go ahead and show you just how bad these graphics are, <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. It says, rescue the enchanted chalice stolen by an evil magician and return it to the golden castle without getting eaten by evil dragons. Um, it, it, it is a lot of fun to play. Let's go ahead and give this, give this a whirl here. Um, start. How do you start? Start. Okay. So the first thing I do is usually grab the key. Okay. <laughs> And then I open the castle with it, and then I can grab this arrow and use it. Oops, so you gotta be careful. Use the arrow to kill dragons, and there's usually one here, and uh, there you go, it's dead. You can barely even see him. Um, and then I can grab this key, all right, and um, I'm doing this pretty quickly, so maybe I will play this. Ooh. See, now that I let go, now that I let go of the sword, that dragon's after me. So you see, if the dragon eats you, the game is over, and I think you only get one life. Um, let me go to um, the beginning. Um, let me go back to the screen. Um, and... Um, there's also some games here by M Network, which is Mattel. Um, I don't really have an opinion of them. Um, I just know that Atari <laughs> made, I mean, Activision made the, the, the best and the most fun games. Um, let me see if I can get back to the menu. See, I can never figure out what to press. Okay. Activision games. All right, um, Atlantis, I don't know much about. Beam Rider, I guess those were games I didn't have. Boxing, I don't think I had. Bridge sounds as boring as can be. Checkers also sounds boring. Chopper Command, Cosmic Computer, Crackpots, Decathlon, Demon Attack. I don't know these games at all. Actually, actually Atlantis says it's by iMagic. It looks like it's not even... Um, an Activision game, so I don't quite understand why it's on this screen. Um, Alright, Dolphin, Dragonfire, Dragster, Endura, Fishing Derby, uh, was a lot of fun. I haven't even played this game yet since I bought this, so I'm even playing this for the very first time since I was a kid. Alright, it says catch more sunfish than your opponent, but watch out for the shark. Says player mode, multiplayer game, one or two players. So let me see um, how I can play this by myself. This is so cool. <laughs> it's so much fun playing these games again. And I know how to play them. Um, there we go. So I do that. All right. And then fish is caught. See, that's all there is to it. And the ones at the bottom, uh, they're worth the most points. All right, but there's a shark going back and forth, so um, the shark can eat the fish. But anyway, let me um, let me see if I can play another Activision game. Um, I like Fishing Derby, but there's better games. I've played Freeway, I think for the first time with a friend since I bought this, and that was a fun game. And you can play both at the same time, you can play against each other, so I like that about the game. Uh, Kaboom, lots of fun, I'm not going to play it, it requires a paddle. Um, I think obviously it's on here and, and the uh, Flashback 8 Gold Activision Edition only comes with joysticks, doesn't come with paddles, uh, but you can probably buy those separately, but I think they're wired. I don't think you can get wireless ones. Um, Keystone Caper is a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with this game, um, so let's go ahead and play that one. All right. Um, start, right? There we go. Yeah, I'm off to a bad stop. I'm supposed to jump over that. The suitcase, I can run right, right through it and pick it up. Those are elevators. It's sometimes faster to just use the escalators. And the idea is to uh, get to the top level and catch 
catch the bad guy before he escapes. I assume he's like uh, shoplifting in a department store. And there he is. This was my first attempt at a multi-camera split-screen recording, so please excuse what was originally a nearly 12-second desynchronization between audio and video, which I didn't completely eliminate becomes apparent when game action lags behind its sound effects. One thing I may have not known, or forgot to mention at the time the video was recorded, was that while I liked the Activision Edition, it lacked the SD card slot that its successor has, 
which would have allowed for the adding of any games omitted from the Activision edition, and then some.